Dune Imperium is a phenomenal board game designed by Paul Denon and published by Direwolf. It's one of my favorite games of all time. And now there's a digital version available on Steam, Android, iOS, and Xbox. In this video, I'll teach you how to play the game and I'll do a full playthrough on the Steam version of Dune Imperium Digital explaining everything as I go. Direwolf has made a very faithful implementation of the board game with a couple of differences that I'll mention once we get there. So if you've never played Dune Imperium and you wanna try out either the digital version or the board game, then this video is for you. Let's talk a little bit about the theme of Dune. In the far future, humanity has spread across the stars and is ruled over by a galactic imperium made up of the emperor and various great houses who all sort of cooperate and also compete for power and wealth and influence. One of the interesting things about the Dune setting is that computers have long since been banned as dangerous thinking machines. And this makes certain things quite complicated. Most importantly, space travel. In order to travel faster than light through the stars, you would normally need advanced computers to calculate your route. But without them, navigators are forced to rely on this creepy drug called the spice, which allows them to see into the future a little bit to predict which paths will be safe to travel. Now, this spice is only available on one place in the known universe, and that is the planet Arrakis, also known as Dune, because it's a desert planet. So the spice only coming from this one place makes this planet extremely important and the spice is extremely valuable. Who controls the spice controls the universe. If you enjoy this video and you're into Dune Imperium, make sure you subscribe to the channel for lots more Dune Imperium stuff. We've got full playthroughs against other players online. We've got the challenge modes from the digital game. We've even got a six game tournament you can watch and plenty more to come. You can also follow me on Twitch, twitch.tv slash bludgeon to watch me play live. All right, let's get right into the game. In Dune Imperium, you play as the leader of one of the great houses of the Imperium. Typically, it's a game played with three or four players. So here we have four players lined up on the left here. Each of us is the leader of a great house. And we're all competing for power and dominance in the Imperium. In the game, that's represented by victory points. And victory points, you can see next to our names, we all have one victory point at the beginning. So this little yellow star planet symbol uh, represents victory points. And you can see that on a few other places on the board indicating where you can find them. All right, so the game ends uh, when one player has at least 10 victory points at the end of a round or after 10 rounds. And then whoever has the most victory points is the winner. All right, now unlike a lot of other games um, where victory points are kind of all over the place and you've got 18 points over here and six points for this and 22 points for that, and you kind of just, at the end of the game, you've got to kind of spend a bunch of time adding everything up and finding out who wins. Dune Imperium is quite different. You, first of all, there aren't that many victory points to go around. And so each one really means a lot. And you're going to collect them as you play through the game. So it's this very tense feeling of, you know, who's going to get the next victory point? And I'm a little behind. How am I going to catch up? All right. Um, so let's let's take this piece by piece. Now this game has a lot of intertwining parts, so it's hard to just isolate one thing and talk about it without also talking about other things, but I'm going to try my best here. All right. So as the leader of a great house, you know, you're not going to get your hands dirty. You're not going yourself to visit all these different people or to fight wars. Instead, you have agents that you send out into the universe to do your work for you. Okay. So next to each player beside the victory points, you can see these two little agent icons. So each round, each player is going to have two agents that they're going to send to somewhere on the board. So here's the board here, and these are board spaces. All right. Now, first of all, what's your goal? Your goal is to get victory points. Okay, so um, how do you do that? Well, each round, there is a conflict that we're going to be fighting over. And so here, for example, you can see that whoever wins this conflict is going to get one victory point. Whoever comes in second is gonna get a water. Whoever comes in third is gonna get a spice. I'll talk about those resources in a second. All right, so how do you win a conflict? Well, you can see these little cubes here. These are our garrisoned troops. So at the end of the round, whoever kind of has the most combat strength in the conflict 
will win first place. Whoever has the second most will win second, and so on. All right, now, how do you get troops? Okay, well, let's take an example. Um, you can see that some board spaces have this little cube icon on them. So if you visit that board space with one of your agents, then you will get to add a troop to your garrison. Okay, um, so how do you send an agent to a space? Well, there's a couple things you have to keep in mind. First of all, you notice that I have these cards here. So Dune is a deck building game. Each person has their own deck of cards and they all start out the same 10 cards. But as you play the game, players are going to add different cards to their decks and their strategies will diverge. Okay, what the cards do is they let you send an agent somewhere. So for example, let's say I wanted to visit uh, Carthag here. I wanted to send an agent to Carthag. Well, Carthag is a city space. You can see these spaces here have this blue or purple circle. That means they're cities. These are on the planet Arrakis itself. And in order to send an agent there, I have to use a card from my hand that has that symbol. So if we look at Dune the Desert Planet here, it doesn't have that symbol. You can see it has that yellow triangle symbol. That's a spice trade symbol. So this card could send an agent to one of these three spaces here or one of these two spaces up here, but it cannot send an agent to one of these spaces. Okay, so if I wanna to go to Carthag, this card isn't gonna help me. Convincing argument here has no little symbols there, which means I can't use this to send an agent anywhere. Okay, Seek Allies has a bunch of different symbols. What are those? Well, over here on the left, are the different factions that exist in the Imperium, the kind of main factions. The top spaces up here belong to the Emperor. Down here is the Spacing Guild. Here we have the Bene Gesserit, and here we have the Freemen. So the Freemen are sort of the desert people that live in the deserts of Dune, and they understand how to get water and how to get spice. The Bene Gesserit uh, are this, is this you know, mystical sisterhood who have managed to train their bodies and minds to absolute beyond peak human performance. And they have complicated breeding schemes and all kinds of secretive plans in the empire. The Spacing Guild has a monopoly on space travel. Uh, they are one of the main customers for spice and you can't go anywhere without their help. And of course, the emperor rules the Imperium. And you know, if you wanna get rich, it helps to be friends with the emperor. Okay, so Seek Allies has one symbol for each of those factions. So I could use that card to send an agent to any of these spaces up here. You can see the space icon there. All right, Dagger here has a green pentagon that represents the Landsrad, which is sort of the galactic uh, government, sort of the galactic UN if you like, where all of the great houses get together and have meetings and talk about things and decide on laws and whatever. So that card could send an agent to any of these top lands rad spaces. All right, so here's my signet ring and you can see it has a green, a purple or blue and a yellow icon. So I could use the signet ring to send an agent to a city space, to a spice trade space or to a lands rad space. All right. So let's, let's do that. I'm gonna use my signet ring and I'm going to send an agent to Carthag over here. So what I do is I pick up my card like this. I click and drag up here. I think you can also just maybe double click on the card to select it and then click where you wanna go. Okay, but I'm gonna do the drag thing. So I can use this to send an agent to Carthag. And before I do it, let me just explain what happens. So you can see that some of these spaces have a little uh, cost on the bottom left. And it means if you wanna send an agent there, you need to pay that cost. So if I wanted to send an agent to the research station here, I would have to pay two water to do it, okay? I don't have two water, so I can't send an agent there. This one cost, costs only one water, all right but Carthag doesn't cost anything, all right? Don't worry about this thing for now. So that means I can send an agent there, I don't have to pay anything. All right, then once you send your agent there, what happens is you get whatever is in the box here. So this means I would get a troop, and this means I will get an intrigue card, which I'll explain in a moment. 
All right, so let's just do it. I'm gonna send my agent over here to Carthex. When I let go, you can see that I'm down one agent here and one agent has gone over here. And a couple things happened. So notice that I have four troops in my garrison now. I had three before, but this one got added. All right, so when it comes to the conflict though, troops sitting in a garrison uh, don't do anything for you. They have to actually be fighting. They have to be in the conflict to matter. So that's what this kind of center area here is all about. Um, and by visiting a space that has these little sword icons on them. So all the spaces on Arrakis itself have this icon and a couple of them over here do. That's what actually allows you to put your troops into the conflict. All right. Um, so the way it works is when you visit a space that has this little icon, you can put in any troops that you gained this turn. So just now I gained one. I can put that into the conflict and I can put up to two more from my garrison into the conflict. So in this case, I could put in zero, one, two, or three troops, right? And by doing that, I'm gonna click on deploy troops. And now I can choose, you know, do I wanna put in three, two, one, zero. Um, all right, so for now, I'm going to put in two troops, all right? And when I'm done, I'm gonna click confirm and that's gonna be the end of my turn. All right, and the other players will then take their turn. So basically on your turn, you just send an agent somewhere if you have any left. So you play a card from your hand to send an agent to a space, you pay the costs, you get the rewards, and that's the end of your turn, all right? So I'm gonna click confirm. All right, now I did get an intrigue card here, all right? and. Um, I'm not gonna explain this just yet, all right? So what we're gonna do is I'm just gonna let the other players take their turns. We can see the cards that the players are playing over here and we can see where they go. All right, so let's look at what just happened here. So the beast, sorry, the beast used uh, his Seek Allies card to send an agent to Still Suits, all right? So he can do that because the Seek Allies has all of the faction symbols. So the Freeman symbol is that one at the bottom. So he can use that card to send an agent to Still Suits here, all right? There's no cost for doing that. By doing it, he gained one water. So we can see he has two water now. Um, what also happened is the Seek Allies card trashed itself. So each card, when you play it, there's like that beige little box there. You can see where it says trash a card. Anytime you use a card to send an agent to a space, you also do whatever it says in that beige part of your card, okay? Um, so he gained, uh, he trashed that card, which means the card is now gone from his deck. He's never gonna see it again this game. It's basically a one-time use card. All right. Another thing that happened is in the Imperium, you're trying to gain influence with these powerful factions. You know, if you can gain influence with the Freeman, that's good. If you can gain influence with the Bene Gesserit and so on, that's good. Um, and we measure your influence with this little track that's beside each faction. Anytime you send an agent to a faction space, you get one influence with that faction. So the beast now has one influence with the Freeman. Everyone else has zero with everybody because nobody has visited any of these other spaces. And what does that do? Well, you can see there's a victory point here at the second level of each of these things. So if you ever get to two influence with a faction, that gets you a victory point. If you ever get to four and you're the first one there, then you get the alliance with that faction, which is worth another victory point. So these faction spaces are really important because they're a great source of victory points. All right, but you might lose that alliance because if anyone passes you, if anyone has more influence with you, then they take the alliance away. You lose your victory point and they get it. Okay. Um, now, I mentioned that whatever you do in that little beige box of your card, that triggers whenever you use that card to send an agent. So my signet ring here 
um, gained me one Solari when I used it to send an agent. All right, so there are three currencies in the game. There's Spice, there's Solari, which is just like the money of the Imperium, and there's Water, which is extremely valuable because Dune is a desert planet. Okay, what else happened? Um, so Leto used a Dune the Desert Planet card to send an agent up here to secure contracts, so he gained three Solari, simple enough. All right, now what Helen did is a little bit more complex. Um, and I don't know if I want to get into it just yet. We're going to talk about that when the time comes. All right, so it's back to my turn. And I have one agent remaining. So I have to choose which one of my cards I want to use to send that agent somewhere. Okay, well, I want to use my Seek Allies. So I'm going to use this to send an agent up here to, uh, this space is called Wealth. All right, so when I do that, I'm going to get two Solari. I'm going to trash the Seek Allies, and I'm going to get one influence with the Emperor here. Okay, um, so I'm gonna end my turn. Everyone else is gonna do another agent. Okay, so the beast visits the fold space section. He gets one influence with the spacing guild. Leto is sending an agent to Arakeen, so he's gonna get a troop. He's gonna draw a card. Okay, and Leto also decided not to deploy any troops there. So just looking at the conflict for a second, at the moment you can see that Helena and I both have two troops in the conflict, so we both have four strength. The beast has one troop, so that's two. Each troop is worth two strength in the conflict. All right, so if things were to stop right as they are now, and this was just the final result, what would happen is Helena and I would be tied for first, except that's not how it works. We actually would be tied for second. Okay, so if the two highest players, you know, instead of tying for first, you tie for second. So we would both get a water. The beast would get one spice and Leto would get nothing. Okay, notice there's only three prizes here. It's a four player game, but there are only three prizes. So even if all four players had troops in here, somebody's walking away empty handed. Okay, it's back to my turn but I have no more agents to send. So even though I have cards left in my hand, I can't use them to send an agent anywhere. So what happens now? Well, now it's called the reveal phase. What happens is all the cards you have left in your hand, you just plunk them down face down on the table and you're going to get whatever is in the bottom section of that card, okay? So you can see two things on the bottom of my cards here. This little number, let's start with this one. This little red sword uh, is called a dagger. No, it's called a sword. Sorry, the card is called dagger. Uh, but what that does is it will add one combat strength. So once I reveal and I show this dagger, my strength of four is gonna get bumped up to five, okay? So swords, when you reveal them, are gonna increase your combat strength. If you have any troops in the conflict. If you have no troops, then they can't use any swords, so it doesn't do anything. Okay, now, the number that we see at the bottom here is called persuasion. And persuasion is sort of the currency that you use to buy cards to add to your deck. All right, so like I said, everybody starts with the same 10 card deck, but as we play, we're gonna add different cards to our deck. All right, so how do we do that? Well, over here on the right, we can see what's called the Imperium Row. So there's a big deck of cards that all get shuffled up and uh, five of them get laid out and whenever one gets purchased it gets replaced with something else so it's random every game is going to be different about what cards show up and you can see the cost for buying these cards is at the top right here so to buy the guild administrator i would need two persuasion to persuade him to come and kind of work for me um, three persuasion would get this gene manipulation. Two persuasion would get this, the voice. All right, so I'm just going to click reveal. Okay, so uh, all those cards, these are my cards that I revealed here and all the players can see that now. And the game is showing me I have three persuasion, right? Two here, 
one here. And so these are all the cards that I have to choose from. So there's the Imperium row here. These are the random cards that are available. And then over here on the right, the Arrakis Liaison and the Spice Must Flow. These are called the reserve cards. And they're, there's just a big stack of those that are available for anybody who wants to buy them. Okay, now this is one of the differences between the board game and the digital game. In the board game, there's a limited amount of these Arrakis liaisons. There are eight of them. Um, there are 10 of these, the spice must flow. But in the digital version, at least at the moment, these are unlimited. Okay, um, now you can see the spice must flow costs nine persuasion. I only have three. I can't do that, but it's an extremely important card because when you buy it, see that little arrow below the nine, when you buy it, you get a victory point. So that's one of the ways to get victory points in the game is getting a lot of persuasion on your reveal turn and buying a spice must flow. Well, I'm not gonna be doing that for a while. Okay, so I have three to spend. Looking at all of these options here, um, I'm going to buy this gene manipulation, okay? So I can see that when I have it, it can take me to Landsrad spaces, it can take me to city spaces, and it has some interesting uh, abilities when I play the card. Um, this little X means I can trash a card, okay? I'll explain that once we get to it. And it also combos with other Bene Gesserit cards. If I have another one in play when I use it, I get two spice. Um, and it reveals for two persuasion. So it's a really nice card. I'm gonna drag it over here from the Imperium row into this little box. And what that does is it's now in my discard pile, which is down here. There it is in my discard pile. So when you buy a card, you can't use it right away. It doesn't do anything when you buy it um, unless it has this little icon under the cost, which might give you a resource or something. For example, Cheney here, when you buy her, you get a water right away. But other than that, they don't do anything when you buy them. They just go into your discard pile. Over here is my deck. So I have five cards left in my deck. And at the start of your turn, you draw five cards. So I'm not going to see this G manipulation for another couple turns. Okay. That is now the end of that. All right. So I'm going to click end turn. The beast is revealing. He has four persuasion. Okay, he picked up this Bene Gesserit Initiate, which gets replaced immediately by Gurney Halleck. Leto reveals for five persuasion and one sword, but his one sword doesn't do anything because he has no troops. Okay, he bought the Cheney, so he goes up in a water. Helena reveals. Okay. Let's talk about what just happened with Helena. She had an extra card there. Why is that? Well, each of the leaders have different special abilities, okay? So for example, for me, Count Ilban Richez is a ruthless negotiator, which means whenever you pay Solari for the cost of a board space, draw a card, okay? So for example, these spaces up here in the lands red cost Solari if you want to visit them. So for me, my special ability is if I ever, basically, if I ever visit any of these spaces and pay Solari to do it, then I get to draw a card, okay? So that's my special ability. Um, Helena's special ability is eyes everywhere. Enemy agents don't block your agents at Landsrat or city board spaces. Okay, so something I haven't mentioned yet is that normally you cannot send an agent to a space that already has one there. Helena is special in that she can still do that with city spaces or with Landsrad spaces, okay? So enemy agents don't block her like they do everyone else. Her own agents still do. She can't send both agents to the same spot, but other players can't block her in these things, which is quite nice. Okay, Leto, Landsrad popularity. Sending an agent to a Landsrad board space costs you one Solari less. Okay, so Leto, when he goes to visit these spaces up here, this one would only cost him one. This one would only cost him four. This one would only cost him three. Okay. The Beast, Arrakis, Fiefdom. You start the game with additional resources, one Spice and one Solari. Okay, so the Beast just gets a little boost in his starting resources. The other difference with leaders is this card called the Signet Ring. So each house kind of has another special ability on this card when they use it. So for me, when I played this card for my agent, I got one Solari. 
for the beast. When he plays a signet ring, he gets a troop or even two troops if he has a faction alliance. So remember that means if he's like the first one to reach level four with one of these factions, then that powers up his signet ring for the rest of the game as long as he has an alliance, giving him two troops. Um, Leto's signet ring, when he plays it, Prudent Diplomacy, allows him to pay a spice to gain one influence with a faction where an opponent has more influence than you. So for example, uh, down here, the beast has one influence with the Freeman, Leto does not. So if Leto were to use his signet ring to send an agent wherever, he could pay a spice and bump up one influence here. And Helena's is called Manipulate, which says remove and replace a card in the Imperium row. So remember the Imperium row are these cards over here. Um, so she can just choose anyone she wants when she plays her signet ring and just set it aside. During your reveal turn this round, you may acquire the removed card for one less. Okay, so that's what she did. When she played her signet ring, she put a card aside, uh, which was this Bene Gesserit sister. And that meant no one else could buy it because it's not actually in the Imperium row anymore. It exists in this like other little place that only she can access. And so she was able to get it for two persuasion, even though it normally costs three because of that special ability. Okay. So we're at this point in the game now, we're still in round one, you can see over here, it says round one of 10, where we've now entered the conflict stage. Everyone has played their agents, everyone has revealed. So the way it works is when it's your turn, if you have any agents, you can send one somewhere. If you don't have any agents or you don't want to, instead you reveal. And that's what we just did where you count up all your persuasion, you count up all your swords and you buy any cards if you want to. Once everyone has revealed, then we move on to checking out this conflict here. So at the moment, we can see that Helena actually has the most strength at six. Why is that? Well, she had two daggers in her hand. I only had one. So I'm at five strength and the beast is at two. So as things stand right now, Helena would get one victory point. I would get one water. The beast would get one spice. Leto would get nothing. But it's not always that simple. That's where we get to these intrigue cards, okay? So intrigue cards, like this one, is what you get when you visit Carthag, or when you visit Conspire, or when you visit Secrets. And these are a separate deck of cards that basically add an element of mystery and bluffing and uncertainty to the game. Um, now, there are some which are red and they're combat entry cards and they might allow you, for example, to add extra combat strength. So right now the game is asking me, do I want to play my intrigue card to influence this? Well, this is a plot card, it's a brown one. So I can't use this during the conflict, all right? So this is not useful for me. So I'm going to pass. The beast has also passed. Leto has also passed. Helena has also passed, which means that's it. The conflict has now been resolved. Helena has won the conflict. So she gets a victory point. I came second, I get a water. The beast came third, he gets a spice. That's the end of that. So you can see there's my water. Okay. Here is our conflict for round two. All right. So. I was the first player last round, but each round that first player token, this little sandworm coin, uh, moves clockwise to the next player. So the beast is actually gonna be the first player. I'm gonna be the last one. All right, so this is moving pretty quickly, um, but we'll go through what's going on in a moment. All okay. So first of all, let's talk about what happened here. What is this? What's this extra little spice? There was an extra spice here and an extra spice here. All right, well, first of all, these desert spaces, this is the primary way that you can get spice in the game because there's some mysterious connection between the spice and the deserts and the sandworms of Arrakis. All right, so normally when you visit, let's say Imperial Basin, there's no cost to go here. You just need a card with a little triangle like that and you would get one spice. But you can see that they all have this little plus thing here. The way this works is 
Um, at the end of the round, any of these spaces that don't have an agent on them, the spice builds up, okay? So nobody had visited Haga Basin and nobody had visited the Great Flat. And so one extra spice was put there. And if nobody visits this again, there'll be another one. So it'll say three plus two. And so these spaces get more and more attractive as people don't go there, okay? Uh, so nothing was put here, I guess, because somebody must have visited that spot. Um, all right, so that's that's that. Now, what happened here? The beast wears green. Okay, so the beast went up here to this space, which is called Cell Melange. So the beast sold two melange for six lar. Melange is another word for spice. All right, so if you want to go to this space... As a cost to visiting it, you have to pay some amount of spice. So the beast paid two spice. And the reward you get is based on how much you paid. All right, so he paid two spice and he got six solari. So that's a way to get a bunch of solari in one shot, which is useful for going to these spaces over here. All right, that's what the beast did. And what card did he use to do it? Okay, so he used his signet ring, which means he also gained a troop. Leto used his Seek allies to send an agent to Still Suits. Okay, so he got a water, he got an influence with the Freeman, and he trashed his Seek allies. What did Helena do? Helena played a Dune the Desert Planet. She sent an agent here to Haga Basin. So she had to pay a water to do it, but she collected two plus the one that was added. So she collected three spice, as you can see here. And because this is a combat space, you can see those little swords, she was allowed to deploy troops to the conflict, which Leto also did. The Freeman spaces here are also combat spaces, so that lets you put troops in. Both of them currently have two troops in the conflict. Okay, it's over to me, and here's my hand. What do I wanna do? All right, well, let's talk about my intrigue card now. Like I said, um, if it's red and it says combat, then that means you can use it in the conflict to try to influence uh, the results. But if it's brown and it says plot, then that means you can use it any time on one of your turns. So either an agent turn or your re reveal turn, you can use it. This one, this little symbol means gain one influence with the spacing guild. So if I wanted to, I could play this card right now and I would go up one with the spacing guild. Okay, but you know what? I'm not gonna do it right now because I like kind of keeping this back and keeping people guessing about what cards I'm holding. There's no need for me to do it right now. All right, let's think about what cards I might wanna use or where I might wanna send agents. Well, I think I could get a bunch of spice here if I wanted to. I could pay two water and get four spice. Not sure if I really wanna do that or not. Or I could use my diplomacy to go to any of these faction spaces. Um, I think I'm going to do that. So I'm going to send my diplomacy back up to wealth once again. And that's going to get me two Solari. And it's going to get me one influence at the Emperor. Which also gets me one victory point. All right, you can see I'm now at two. I got one from the beginning of the game. And I got one now from this influence track. Helena has two. One from the beginning of the game, one from the first conflict. All right, everybody else has one. And that's the end of my turn. I can't put any troops in because that's not a conflict space. Okay, the beast uses a dagger to send an agent to the high council seat. I'll talk about that in just a second. Okay, so Beast Raban sent an agent to the High Council. For that, he had to pay five Solari. And he took a seat on the High Council. So you can see there's four seats on the High Council, one for each player. But currently three of them are empty, but one of them now is filled in green, which means the Beast has a seat on the High Council. What does that do? That means for the rest of the game, when it comes time for the beast to reveal and count up his persuasion in order to buy cards, 
he's going to get an extra two persuasion every round. Okay, so it's a really nice bonus. What did Leto do? Well, Leto visited another Freeman space. So he sent both agents to Freeman spaces. He got an influence. He now has a point with the Freeman. He paid a water here for Hardy Warriors and gained two troops. And this is also a combat space. So that means that he can send both of those troops plus up to two more from his garrison into the conflict. And um, he decided he already had two in. So he just threw in two. He could have put in these two as well, but he decided that's probably good enough. Helena, uh, where did she send her other agent here? Conspire. Oh, right. Okay. So she sent an agent up to this emperor's spot, which costs four spice and it gained her five Solari, two troops and an intrigue card. Now these two troops, she cannot throw into the conflict now because this is not a combat space. It doesn't have those swords. Okay. All right. Over to me. I have one agent left so I could use my dagger to send one up here somewhere. Um, but you know what I'm going to do? I want more Solari. So I'm going to use my Dune, the Desert Planet, and I'm going to send an agent up here to secure contract, which just gets me three Solari. Now you might say, well, this one gets you three. This one gets you two. Isn't this one better? Mm, sometimes it is if you really want that Solari, but this one gets you influence with the Emperor, which can be worth points. All right. And that's the end of my turn. Okay, the beast has revealed. Leto is revealing, only has one persuasion, but does have a couple of swords. Helena, four persuasion, no swords. So you can buy as many cards as you can afford, okay? So she had four persuasion, so she bought one card, it replaced itself, and she bought the next one. She bought two of the same card, I think. This guild administrator. Okay, it's over to me and I'm gonna reveal. The one thing that you can look at too is you can look at your cards here to see how much persuasion you have. But up here at the top right, it gives you a preview as well. Okay, so I'm gonna have three persuasion. So I'm gonna reveal. And looking at my options here, you can see I have these three choices. Um, all right, I'm gonna get this The Voice card. Um, I like it because it can take me to two places. It can take me to cities and it can take me to uh, spice trade spots. Also, it reveals for two persuasion, which is really nice to try to build up my persuasion to buy better cards and hopefully a spice must flow in the future. But it also has this really cool agent ability. So if I use this card to send an agent, then it lets me choose any board space. Opponents can't send their next agents there this round. So basically until my round, my turn comes back again, my opponents are blocked from visiting that space. It kind of lets me reserve a space for my next agent or just kind of mess with other people's plans. So I'm gonna take that card. That's now gonna go into my discard pile. I have one persuasion left, but there's nothing that costs one. I can't do anything with it. So it's just gonna disappear. We're down to the conflict. People have the option of playing intrigue cards. Everyone is passing. So it resolves. Leto wins, gets one victory point and a water. Helena gets a water and a spice. All right, we're gonna see these two desert spaces get a spice added to them because nobody visited them. All the agents come off the board. We move on to the next conflict. Leto is the first player now. He sends an agent to the Great Flat. Yeah, that's a great, that's a great play. He picks up five spice. Okay, Helena just used an Intrigue card. And she gets her High Council seat now. Okay, so let me just show you what Helena did. She played this... Uh, I guess it doesn't show me. This is something I hope they can improve. Um, okay, she used this card here, Poison Snooper. Look at the top card of your deck, either draw it or trash it. Um, now... This can be good for getting bad cards out of your deck or for just getting an extra card into your hand this turn. And it's a one-time use. Okay, that's what she did. 
over to me. All right, well. Okay, so this is kind of interesting here. I have this G manipulation I picked up earlier. And looking at this card, when I play it, it does two things. It lets me trash a card. Okay, so that's gonna let me get one of these weaker cards out of my deck. And if you have another Bene Gesserit card in play, get two spice. That means before I play this card, I need to have already played a different Bene Gesserit card. Okay, well, luckily I have another Bene Gesserit card in my hand. So I'm gonna play this one first. Um, let's see, where do I wanna go? Well, this is two spice, which is pretty good. Um, or do I wanna visit a city? I think I'm gonna go grab this two spice that's just sitting here for free. All right, and now there's two things that happen. It's a combat space, so if I want to, I can deploy some troops. And um, I think I will. But I think I'm just gonna put in one here. I'm not too confident. I think one, maybe I can sneak a reward. Mm, you know what? I've changed my mind. I'm gonna use this undo button here. And I'm gonna make that two troops. Okay, so keep an eye on that undo. It's down here when you want it. It doesn't always work because if you've done anything that kind of changes the state of the game in a way that can't be reversed, like if you've drawn a card and now you know what it is, then you can't undo it. But sometimes it can help you out. All right, the next thing is I get to block a board space because of my voice's agent ability. So what space do I wanna block? Well, it's only for this turn. Um, what do I think people want to do? Leto is sitting on five spice. What do I think Leto wants to do? Well, Leto might want to visit this cell melange to get a bunch of Solari. Or he might want to go to conspire. Hmm. I'm going to block this cell melange and see if we can mess up Leto's plans. And that's the end of my turn. Beast visits still suits. Gets a water. Gets an influence, so that gives him a point. He throws in a couple of troops. Leto's visiting Siege Taber. Activating his signet ring, getting a troop, getting a water. Helen is visiting fold space. Trashing a dagger. Getting an influence with the guild. Acquiring a fold space. Kale, okay, talk about that in just a moment. All right, let's go through what just happened here. So as you can see, the action log is up here. It's handy for seeing what's going on. Um, let's see, where are we here? Okay, so the beast used this card called Fold Space. What is that? Well, when you visit the basic uh, guild space here, you get this Fold Space card into your discard pile, okay? So it's a card you can only get by visiting this space. Uh, you can see it has no cost at the top right. There's no way to buy it. You can only get it by going here. But it's a very nice card because it has every space on the game. You can visit any of the factions. You can visit, visit any board space on the whole board by using fold space once you draw it into your hand. Uh, but you can see in the agent box, it does two things. It also draws you a card when you play it. So that's really nice. But it also trashes itself. So once you use it, it's gone. You don't get to use it again. If you want more fold space cards, you need to visit fold space. Okay. Um, anything else to note here? Okay, so Leto using the signet ring was able to use his special ability. He spent a spice and gained one influence with the emperor here. So Leto was behind and still is. So he got a free influence. Well, not free, but he got an influence there. Um, Helena used this guild administrator to go to fold space herself, and that agent ability says you may trash a card. That's what that little card with the X means. You don't have to do it, but if you want to, you can. And what that means is you can choose any card from your discard pile, or that's still in your hand, or any of the cards you've already played 
to send agents this turn. So any of the cards that are in play already in your discard pile or in your hand, you can choose one and just take it out of the game. Okay, so she did that. All right, it's over to me. And here's what I want to do. So like I said, I primed myself by playing this voice. Now I want to play this gene manipulation. And what I want, see I have this eight Solari. The reason I've been building that up is I want to visit Swordmaster. It costs eight Solari to go here. But when I visit, I get an extra agent for the rest of the game. So, so far we've only had two agents each round. But once I do this, it's gonna be three. All right, so let's do it. So you can see I have my other agent and I'm gonna be able to use it this round. All right, now visiting this triggered a couple of things. One is I get to draw a card. That's because of my uh, Ruthless Negotiator ability. I paid Solari for visiting that Swordmaster, so I get to draw a card. And my G manipulation says, I get to trash a card and I can do that in whatever order I want. Whatever the things, the things from the board spaces and the things from your agent abilities, you can do them in whatever order you want. So I'm going to draw my card first. Now notice that I, at the moment I could undo this, but once I draw a card, that's it. I can't undo anymore because now I know what's in my hand. Okay. I'm now going to trash a card and Unfortunately, I have no cards in my discard pile, so I can't do that. I have these cool cards in my play area. I don't want to get rid of those. So I am going to trash a card from my hand. So it's either a dagger or it's a dune, the desert planet. All right, I can get this out of the way for a second. Looking at the conflict, having two daggers might help me win this. Um, so daggers are usually a good one to get rid of. But... You know, I think I'm going to lose a Dune the Desert Planet for now. And that's gone. Okay, I could undo that, but I'm not going to. Over to the Beast. He visits the Research Station. Costs two water, but draws three cards. And it's actually going to be four, because that card he played also draws a card. So he has a massive amount of cards in hand. Okay, these two are revealing. Ooh, nice greeny Halleck picked up there. Okay, it's over to me. And now I have another agent because I just got that Swordmaster, so I can still do something here. Well, the only thing I can do is I could send a dagger up to Hall of Oratory, which would give me one troop into my garrison, which I could not deploy because it's not a combat space. It would also give me one extra persuasion to use this round, um, which is kind of appealing because I only have one, which doesn't do anything. If I go up to two, that's going to let me get something. So that's kind of an appealing choice. On the other hand, I did kind of want to have a dagger to try to edge out the beast here. The thing is, he has eight cards in hand. He probably has some swords in there. So, hmm. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is, you know what, no. I'm gonna take more Solari here. And we'll stop there. Okay, one sword and I have two. So that's going to let me win. Now, he had a massive amount of persuasion. He buys his spice must flow and gets a victory point right away. Okay. Um, so all I can do is reveal. It's two swords and zero persuasion. So I cannot get anything, um, but it is going to let me hopefully win this conflict. We'll see if anybody decides to play an intrigue card. Okay. 
Okay, as the winner, I collect the prizes. So what happens here? Well, I'm gonna get two Solari and an Intrigue card, same as the Beast, but I'm also gonna get the Mentat. So we haven't talked about the Mentat yet. Oh, look at this. This is interesting. So as my reward, I gained an Intrigue card. Now here's the Intrigue card I got. It's a combat card and it says, demand respect when you win a conflict. Choose one, either gain one influence with any faction or pay two spice to gain two influence with any faction. And I'm allowed to play this immediately upon winning it. I just won the conflict and I'm allowed to play this right away. So I'm gonna do it. And I think I'm gonna use this ability and I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna get two influence with the Freeman here. At the moment I have zero, but I wanna get up to number two, partly to get this victory point, but also because you may have noticed this Siege Tabber space has a weird requirement here. Normally this is the cost to go there, but this says you must have two or more influence with the Freeman to visit this space. Okay, so I wanna kinda of get that so that this becomes an option for me in the future. It's another way to get water. So I'm gonna do that. That's a very nice bonus for me. All right, we're into round four. All right, Helena used her signet ring ability to set this power play aside for herself. Now, it's over to me. And, hmm. I have four potential agents to send this round because I have a sword master. So I've got three for the rest of the game and I got this Mentat. So I haven't talked about this space, but the Mentat space, um, when you visit this space, it costs two Solari to do it. You draw a card and you take the Mentat, which is an extra agent to use for this round. By winning the last conflict, it gave me the Mentat to use for this round, so it's not there on the board. Four agents to spend. Uh, that's pretty wild. Now, looking at my hand, I actually only have three cards that, I'm, that I can send anywhere because these convincing arguments have no agent icons. So that tells me that I think I need to draw... Uh, I need to draw some cards. Okay, so here's what I want to do. I have five Solari, and I think it's a good time for me to pick up the High Council seat. So I'm gonna use my Signet Ring. I'm gonna visit the High Council seat, and that's gonna get me one bonus Solari from the Signet Ring. And because of my Ruthless Negotiator, I'm also going to draw a card. All right, so let's draw that card. Okay, so I got this gene manipulation back again. All right, and that is the end of my turn. The Beast sends a power play to Still Suits. That's a great card because it gets you two influence instead of one when you use it, but it trashes itself. The Beast has now grabbed this Freeman Alliance, okay? So you can see that this little Alliance icon is gone. He has it up here. So that's worth a point for him. If anybody can pass him, They'll take it away. All right, over to me. Um, let's see. Okay, I think you know this is this is pretty nice here, three spice. But unfortunately, I can't go there because I don't have any. Uh, yellow triangle, so I can't do that. I think what I would like to do is I'm going to visit Secrets here. So I'm going to send my diplomacy over to Secrets. And that's going to get me an influence with the Bene Gesserit. And what Secrets does is you draw an Intrigue card. So I just did that. This little thing here means um, if any other players have four or more Intrigue cards, then you get to steal one of them at random from each player who has four or more. Okay, so that's 
kind of a limit on how many intrigue cards you want to be holding on to. It's dangerous to ever have four or more in your hand at once. All right, and here's what I drew, bypass protocol. So I can use this, again, during my agent turn or during my reveal turn to acquire a card that costs three or less. Okay, so I could, there's a few choices there. Or pay two spice to acquire a card that costs five or less and put it on top of your deck. Now, unfortunately, I cannot get this power play. That's set aside by Helena. I don't have access to that. But I could use it to get this Sardaukar Legion, which is a pretty nice card. Um, it's about whether I want to pay that spice to do it. Now, I don't have to do it right now. So maybe I'll think about it. Um, I think I'll just end my turn here. Okay, Beast collects some spice. Now his signet ring gives him two troops because he has this alliance. Okay, Leto is catching up here. Oh! Okay, Helena. Helena, Helena, Helena. I thought she was going to get this power play, but she decided instead to take that Sardaukar Legion. So that one I was thinking about getting, I can't anymore. She took it instead. Uh, but it did get replaced with another kind of interesting card, this carry-all, which allows me to get a bunch of spice. All right. Well, hmm. This is a little tricky. I think I still would like to get another card. I want to be able to trash something, and I don't really want to trash any of these. So I'm going to use my Reconnaissance first. I could get another Water, or I could draw another card. Now I can click on my deck here to see what I might get. Okay. Hmm. I'm gonna draw a card here. Okay, so I got a dagger. Doesn't do a lot for me. I can deploy a troop if I want to, by because I because I visited this space and I just gained a troop. But uh, I don't think I have a good chance really of winning it. Maybe I could beat the beast. Depends on what he has in his hand, but I don't think it's really worth it. So I'm not gonna do that. But. I think I do want to use this bypass protocol. So I'm gonna do that now. I'm gonna pay the two spice and I'm gonna take this carry all and put it on top of my deck. So this is gonna let me get a whole bunch of extra spice uh, and I'll show you how that works next round. Okay, and that's gonna be that. Oh, eight. What's it going to be for Leto? Grabs a duck in Idaho. A lot of big cards getting picked up here. All right, and it's still not even my reveal because of all the agents that I've been able to use here. Okay, so I can use this gene manipulation and that's going to let me trash a card. Now, if I wanted to, I could just I could just reveal now. You don't have to use all your agents. So, for example, this is worth two persuasion if I keep it to reveal. So, potentially, if there was something that cost eight here that I thought was really great, um, I might just reveal and not use it. Um, so, I have, you know, I have two here, four, six, and then eight for my high council seat. But um, there is nothing that costs that much. So what I'm gonna do is send it uh, here to Siege Tabber, get myself another water. 
and that's going to let me trash a card. So let me do that. Uh, I could trash a card from my play area or from my hand. Maybe it's time to get rid of this dagger. I think, I think I don't need the dagger anymore. So let me just get rid of that. And I could deploy troops. I could put in two, but I still, I mean, I guess I, I could have fought for second place actually. Let me undo that. So unless somebody plays an intrigue card, they've already revealed. So they don't have any secret swords from their hands I don't know about. I can see that the Beast and Leto both are at four. So you know what? If I instead keep that dagger in my hand, let me trash this reconnaissance. When I reveal, if I deploy these two troops, I'll end up with five. So I'll get second place. They'll both tie for third, which means they'll both get nothing. So I'm gonna do that just to kind of mess with them. And I'll end turn. Okay, they've already revealed, so it just comes straight back to me again. It's time for me to reveal. All right, so there I get bumped up to five. I have six to spend here. And I have some interesting choices because this Bene Gesserit card combos nicely with the other ones I have. But this Liet Kynes, if I buy this card, it will immediately give me an influence with the Emperor, which I think could be handy because it might help me get this alliance. Um, this one helps me combo stuff better, but I'm going to do this. Okay, I have one left. Can't spend it. I went up my influence there. I'm going to end the turn. We'll see if anybody wants to play an Intrigue card. Uh, I'm passing, obviously. Okay, so... <laughs> Helena wins, she gets an influence with the faction of her choice, she gets two intrigue cards. But I really screwed these guys. Um, I stole second place, so I'm gonna get an intrigue card and a spice and they're both gonna get nothing. So I kinda like that play. It's one of the advantages of uh, playing last. You know, it's one thing the Mentat is kinda nice for, is it lets you delay your decision making. Sometimes waiting to see what everybody else, you know, where everyone else is standing in the conflict and it lets you make a good decision about potentially getting an edge, which I did. Okay, so I'm the first player and right away, uh, I'm looking at this. Why is it not showing me the name of this space? It's kind of weird. Anyway, um, I've got this carry-all that I just put on top of my deck. And what that says is double the base spice you harvest with this agent. So if I use the carry-all to send an agent to uh, the deep desert here, weird, I'm going to get six plus one. I'm going to get seven spice. So that's just too hard to resist. I'm doing that. So I've got a load of spice now. Um, I could deploy troops, but I don't have any, so unfortunately I can't. Okay, so you saw what just happened there. <laughs> An intrigue card was just stolen. Leto visited Secrets, so he drew an Intrigue card, but at that time, Helena had four in hand, so a random one of her Intrigue cards was given to Leto. Um, so you have to be really careful about not holding on to too many Intrigue cards. Okay, it's over to me. What kind of mischief do I want to get up to? Hmm. Well, 
I don't have any troops in my garrison. I can't visit any of these factions with the cards I have available to me. So I could try to draw a card because I, I'm not super psyched about my options otherwise. Um, hmm. What could I draw from my deck? I have some cards that might be kind of nice. All right, I'm going to use the voice and I'm gonna visit Arakeen here so that I get to draw a card. Okay, very nice. I could deploy a troop, uh, but I don't feel too good about this. Large garrisons over here, there's already two in. Um, I don't see myself winning this, so I'm not going to deploy a troop, but I am going to block a board space, and... Hmm. Where do I want to go with my next agent? I don't really have amazing options, I feel. I'm considering this secure contract just so I can get three Solari to open up this rally troops in the future, or maybe Mentats in the future. Um, so I'm going to do that. I'm just going to reserve that one. And I'm going to say, well, you know what? I changed my mind. I'm going to reserve this Hardy Warriors. Because I think I might be able to actually sneak a win in this conflict thanks to my double cross ability. So I can use this to take a troop out from somebody else and add one of mine in. So that combined with visiting Hardy Warriors might actually allow me to win this conflict. Okay, so I have to use Liet Kynes because she's the only one that has uh, the Freeman agent icon. We'll send her over to Hardy Warriors, costing me a water. I'm going to put in three troops. And that's going to be that. And we'll wait and see. Ooh, urgent mission. Recall one of your agents. So the beast gets to take an agent back from the board and then use it again. Visiting research station, drawing three cards, putting in a troop. Leto sells Milan, gets a bunch of Solari. Okay, Helena. Hmm. So this is kind of interesting. At the moment, uh, I'm winning by one. I'll add one more dagger, so it'll be two. But the thing is, she has three intrigue cards there is a chance that she has something that will boost her up. So I kind of want to win this point because this does two things. One, it's a victory point, but two, it's a siege of Carthag. This little icon here means that whoever wins this will get control of Carthag, okay? So what that means is below these three spaces, Carthag, Arakeen, and Imperial Basin, there's this little flag thing and it doesn't do anything until somebody wins control of that space. So for example, if I win this, I get to put my little yellow flag here. And what that means is, um, whenever anybody visits this space in the future, including me, I'll get one Solari because I have control of that space. The other thing it does is, if a future conflict for Carthag comes up, I'll get to put uh, one of my troops from my supply directly into the conflict as a defensive bonus. So it'll, it'll give me an advantage there. So 
Um, you know what? I'm going to use this card here just to try to... Just to try to make sure I win this. I might not need it. But I'm going to make Helena lose a troop. And I'm going to add a troop in. It's going to make it harder for her to overcome me with entry cards. Maybe she still can. And maybe even the beast can for that matter. But I'm going to try. Okay, I have five Solari to spend. Unfortunately, it's just one off from a couple of really nice cards. And, um, hmm... You know, I think this Spice Smugglers is kind of interesting. I'm sitting on a lot of spice. And playing this card allows me to pay two spice to get an influence with the guild and three Solari. I'm going to do that. I'm going to take that. We'll see what pops up. I have three more to spend. I could get an Imperial Spy, um, which could help me get that alliance. But I'm a little concerned I don't have a lot of persuasion in my deck, and I want to be able to get a Spice Must Flow in the future. So I'm going to take this Arrakis Liaison. Am I? Yes. Okay, that's that. The Beast grabbing another Spice Must Flow. Okay, so I am going to win. I'm going to get the point. I'm going to get control of card bag. These two each get something. There's my little yellow flag there. All right. Okay, Leto gets his Swordmaster, so now he also will have three agents for the rest of the game. Alright, Helena put in uh, three troops there. How did she do that when Karthag only gives you one? Well, Gurney Halleck, as his agent ability, lets you draw a card and recruit two troops. So. When you visit a combat space, any troops you require this turn, no matter how, whether it's from the space itself, Karthag gave one, or from your agent card, like here, Gurney Halleck gave two, all of those, plus up to two more from your garrison, can go in. Okay, so that's how she threw in three troops there. It's over to me, and... I'm kind of thinking that I'd like to get this alliance here while I can. The winner of this conflict is going to get one influence with two uh, factions of their choice. I don't think I have much of a chance to win it, so I don't think I'm going to fight for it, but I think I want to make sure I can get this alliance. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to use my Diplomacy to send an Agent to Wealth. I'm going to get two more Solari. I'm going to get one Influence. And what that's going to do is I'm going to get this Alliance with the Emperor, because I'll be the first one to cross this uh, Four Influence line. But also you see that there's this little thing next to the Four Influence line. And that means anytime anybody crosses that line, they get this little bonus. So I'm going to get two troops into my garrison for doing that. The victory point came from the Alliance, the troops came from this little bonus, and once again, because it's not a combat space, I cannot send them in. That's the end of my turn. All right, it's back over to me. And 
I have two agents left, so I kind of want to use both of these cards, right? These both have nice agent abilities. The Signet Ring gets me a Solari. The Gene Manipulation um, will let me trash a card. And I have a discard pile, so this is a good time for me to trash a card because it means I don't have to lose something from my hand and I can get, I can get rid of one of my weaker cards. So... Hmm. Where would I like to go? I'm not going to get the bonus spice, unfortunately, because I don't have another Bene Gesserit card for that. I can't visit any of the city spaces, so this would have to go to a Landsrad space. I guess the only choice would be Mentat if I want. Problem is, if I do that, that will draw me a card. Which means my discard pile. I have no cards in my deck right now. So when you need to draw a card and you can't, then you take your discard pile, you shuffle it up, and that becomes your deck, and you draw a card. So if my plan is to, you know, trash a card here, um, that'll be a little bit tricky. Now, theoretically, I should be able to trash a card before drawing a card. I just don't know if it will actually work. I guess now is as good a time as any to test it. Let's see. Okay. Oh, <laughs> I don't pay Solari for this. So that actually does not draw me a card, right? Okay, fair enough. Um, let's get rid of this dagger from my discard pile. That's the end of my turn. Yeah, this conflict is very hard fought here. Um, I'm not getting involved. Ooh, that was a card I kind of wanted, but it's no longer an option for me. Um, okay, so as you can see right now, I'm sitting on six persuasion. Two, four, five, wait. Two, four, five. How do I have six? Oh yeah, six. I got this one up here. So I kind of was thinking about doing an early reveal to grab that opulence um, that Helena picked up, but it's not there anymore. So I could still use my signet ring and be left with five and hopefully get the power play. Um, so I'm going to do that. I'm going to send my signet ring over to... Hmm. Is it worth visiting the Mentat right now? Doing that would draw me two cards and I'd get another agent to play. Uh, it's kind of interesting. You know what? Let's just do it to show you how it works. Okay, so I draw two cards because one of them is from the Mentat space and one of them is from my ability. Whenever you pay Solari for the cost of the board space, draw a card. All right, so I'm gonna draw two cards here. Okay. And I'm gonna end a turn. Okay. Hmm. I have a lot of persuasion. Well, the only thing I can use is my Dune the Desert Planet, so I might as well just use it. We'll grab some Solari. And end the turn. It's gonna come straight back to me for my reveal. Okay, so the way the Get Kinds works here is it's worth two persuasion for each Freeman card you have in play, including this one. Well, she's the only Freeman card I have in play, so it's worth two. 
All right, seven. Well, this power play is a really nice card to get because it takes you to any faction and it gets you two influence uh, when you use it. So I'm gonna grab that for five. I have two remaining. Another voice I think wouldn't be bad for me because it's a good two persuasion reveal, but also it's a Bene Gesserit card, which I might be able to combo and it can mess people up. So let's grab one of those. Okay, we'll end the turn. One of the most powerful cards in the game just showed up in the Imperium row. Okay, here's Leto playing a combat entry card. So he just boosted his strength by three. Helena now is also playing an entry card. She's boosting hers by two, and she's playing another one to boost it by three more. Okay, so let's talk about how these cards work in combat. Um, okay, so unfortunately, <laughs> they, I didn't get a chance to pause on that uh, because I wasn't involved in the combat. If you don't have any troops in the, in the conflict, then you don't get the opportunity to play combat entry cards. Um, but yeah all right now these conflicts you may have noticed are starting to get more valuable so the final uh conflict seven eight nine and ten the final four conflicts are called level three conflicts and they're worth way more the very first conflict is a level one the next uh five are level two and the last four are level three so this is the first uh, level three conflict and it's worth two victory points and control of Arakeen. It's a pretty big deal. Okay, let's pause for a second and talk about exactly how combat entry cards work. Uh, now at the moment, this is something that is actually different in the digital game from the, the tabletop game. And it's not totally clear if it's an intentional change or if it's just not being implemented correctly at the moment. So first I'm going to explain how it's supposed to work, how it works in the real game according to the rules, and then I'll tell you how it's currently working in the digital game, which maybe will change and maybe won't. Okay, so the way this works is once we get to the combat stage, starting with the first player, so whoever has this little worm token, um, that player has the opportunity to either play intrigue cards, one or two or however many they want, or they can pass. And then it goes to the next player and that player has the opportunity to play any intrigue cards or they can pass. The conflict is resolved once every player has passed consecutively. So in other words, once every player has decided, no, I don't wanna play any intrigue cards when they have the chance to, then the conflict is resolved and you decide who wins. Okay, let's do an example here. So Leto is the first one to participate. Let's say Leto, okay, currently has two intrigue cards, but Leto says, no, I either don't have anything I want to play or don't have anything I can play. Um, either way, I'm passing, I'm not playing an intrigue card. Okay, Helena says, I am playing an intrigue card. So Helena plays an intrigue card, adds some combat strength. It's over to me. I pass, it's over to the beast, the beast passes, okay? Now it's back to Leto again, right? Because all the players have not yet passed in a row. So Leto has another chance because now he knows Helena has played a card so he can decide, well, you know what? Maybe I want to play a card, but he says, no, nope. I pass. Okay, I'll just draw over that like that. And now it's back to Helena. So Helena has the option of either passing herself, in which case now all four players have passed consecutively. And if that happens, then that's it. The combat is over. No more intrigue cards can be played. We decide who wins. Okay, or she could play another intrigue card and not all four players have passed in a row. So it goes back to me. I have another chance. I'm gonna pass again. 
goes back to the beast. The beast passes again, goes back to Leto. Leto passes again. This time Helena passes. It's over. We resolve the conflict. Okay. So that's how it's supposed to work. Um, let me just do another example like that. Okay, let's say Leto is the first player. All right, Leto decides to play an entry card. Helena decides to pass. I decide to pass. The Beast decides to play an intrigue card. Okay, well, Leto gets another chance, right? Because not all four players have passed. Okay, so Leto says, you know what? The Beast just passed me. I played some swords, but now the Beast played some more swords. So we know I've got another one. I'm going to play another intrigue card. Okay, it goes to Helena. Helena passes. I pass. The Beast passes. And Leto gets the final say here, because once again, not all four players have passed in a row, but this time he does pass. So it's resolved. Okay, again, that's how it's supposed to work. But currently that's not how it works in the digital game. Let me show you how it works in the digital game. Let's say Leto starts off by playing an intrigue card. Okay, and let's say Helena passes and let's say I pass, and let's say the beast passes. In the digital game, this is over now, and we're gonna resolve the conflict. It doesn't give Leto another chance to play, even though not all four players have passed. But basically the game thinks, well, everyone had a chance to play, um, and so it's over, okay? Let me give you another example. Let's say Leto passes, Helena passes, I pass. Okay, so right now, if the beast passes, it's all over. That's just the same as in the regular game. But if the beast plays an entry card, then everyone is gonna get another chance. Okay, so the beast plays an entry card. All right, let's say Leto passes again, Helena passes again, and I pass again. When it goes back to the beast, it's gonna be over and the conflict is gonna resolve. So basically the rule is um, if everybody passes, it's over. But also if somebody plays an intrigue card and the other players pass, it's over, okay? So unfortunately there is this very confusing difference between the digital mode and the physical mode at the moment. I really hope that they fix this, but I don't know if they will. Anyway, I hope that makes sense and we'll see if it plays out again in the game. And by the way, if you have no troops in the conflict, you cannot play any entry cards during the combat. Okay, so it's back to me. We're at this level seven conflict where the winner is gonna get two victory points and control of Arakeen. Now, this is really something that I would like to win, um, but it's gonna be a little bit tricky because what I'd like to do with all of my spice is visit this Hayliner space. It costs six spice to go here, which is a lot, but the spacing guild, I mean, that's who you go to when you need to move a lot of troops across uh, the galaxy. So if you give them a whole bunch of spice, they'll help you move five troops. You get five troops here and you get two water. Also notice this is a combat space. So that means you can throw all five of these troops plus up to two more from your garrison into the conflict when you visit here. So this is like a real, I want to win this conflict kind of a space. And I have the spice for it, but unfortunately I did not draw uh, any card that can take me there. You know, the only card I have, I guess I have two cards that could get me there. Power play has faction icon, diplomacy has faction icons, but that's it. I've got two cards that could take me there. I didn't draw either one, so what can I do? Well, drawing cards might give me a chance to get there. So how can I draw cards? Well, I could draw a card by going to Arakeen. Um, I could draw a card by going to Mentat. And in fact, that would let me draw two cards because of my special ability as Ilbon. So that might be a good idea. The research station would draw me three cards, but unfortunately, I don't have the water to pay for it. So looking at my options here, let's see, the cards I have, 
Hmm, the spice smuggler might be kind of nice because that would let me get um, an influence with the guild here. And, you know, I want to get this point if I can. So that might be a way to do that. It would also get me three Solari, which I don't super need at the moment. The voice could block somebody else's grand plans. Carry all could get me some spice, but I can only go here with it. So it would double this one spice. So carry all to Imperial Basin is worth three spice, which is honestly not bad. Um, Arrakis Liaison is the only card I have that can take me to the Mentat. Hmm. Well, I think I do want to go to that Mentat. I want to draw two cards right now and hopefully draw one of my faction cards. So I'm going to... I'm going to do it. However, if I don't get it, I'm going to want the card from Arakeen. So you know what? I'm going to use the voice. I'm going to use the voice to go to Arakeen. That also is going to let me throw in some troops. It'll draw me one card. And what I'm going to do is block people from visiting Mentat so that I can do that on my next round. So maybe I won't end up using this Spice Smugglers. Oh, it's tricky. It's very tricky, but I think that's the way I'm going to do it. So let's do this. And I drew the Diplomacy. Okay, fantastic. Now that means I actually don't necessarily need the Mentat. So what space do I want to block instead? Well, hmm, I could save this spice spot for myself. I don't think I need to reserve the Hayliner because nobody else has enough spice to go there. So it would be this one for my carry all or potentially the siege tower for my spice smuggler so that I get to use that. I think that's going to be the play. And I am going to deploy... I'm going to deploy two troops right now. I could put in three. Um, but I'm planning to go to the Hayliner with this diplomacy. And so... Oh, that means... Yeah which means I'll be able to throw in those two anyway when I go there. So I think that's good enough. We'll do that and we'll end the turn. Beast gets a late Swordmaster. Okay, where is Leto going here? Hardy Warriors. Okay, so Leto looks like he's really fighting for this. And he passes the Beast on the Freeman influence track here, so he steals that alliance from the Beast. So Beast got minus one point, Leto gets plus one. That also means that in the future, the Beast Signet Ring is gonna only give him one troop instead of two because he no longer has a faction alliance. Okay, back to me. And um, again, my plan is to go to Hayliner, but I don't need to do it right now. So I'm gonna use my Spice Smugglers. I'm gonna go here, I'm gonna get myself some water. I get myself another troop. Um, I'm going to activate this ability here. So I'm going to pay two spice. That's going to give me an influence with the guild. It's also going to give me three Solari. And I can put in two troops here. I'm going to put in at least one. Yeah, let's just do one for now. And I'm just kind of baiting these people a little bit. I'm giving them hope. Okay, so you can see that the beast is now tied with Leto with influence there, but you have to actually 
past the other player if you want to take the alliance. So the beast, even though they're even, Leto doesn't lose the alliance unless the beast actually passes him. So that means if you get to the top of this, you can't be passed. All right, it's over to me. And Leto has thrown in some more troops, but it's time for me to uh, drop the hammer here. So here we go. Six spice goes into the guild's coffers. I get an influence with the guild bringing me up to two, so that gets me a point. And now look at my garrison. I have seven troops in here, and I can throw all of those in if I want to. Um, but I don't think I need to throw them all in. So let's see. Leto has four in right now. He's out of agents, so he shouldn't be able to throw in any more. He does have one intrigue card. Um, the beast has one agent remaining. Where could he go? He could go to research station. That would let him put in two troops. You could go here and put in two troops. I don't think the beast has much of a chance to catch me here. Helena is in for one. She has two intrigue cards. It'll be pretty hard to catch me there at 12, but there is still the reveal phase and I have no daggers for myself. For all I know, Leto could have some daggers in his hand. I'm gonna go with 14 and I'm gonna save some troops for next round. I think this should be enough. If it ends up not being enough, I'll be very sad, but I'm gonna try. Okay, and we'll stop there. Okay, so Leto revealed he did have some swords in hand, right? He had three. He has one intrigue card. There are intrigue cards that give you five swords or even seven. So we'll see, he might, he might get me here, but I'm hoping he does not. All right, I'm revealing for seven. Now notice I got a spice here because there's a spice on the reveal box of the carry all. So I got my one spice from that and I have seven persuasion. Unfortunately, it's not eight and it's not nine. But it is seven, um, so Thufir Hawad is a really great card. Has access to every space on the board except the Landsrad at the top of the board. When you play him as an agent, you draw a card, or if you reveal him, you get an intrigue card. Just an extremely versatile card. So I'm gonna grab that. And with my remaining two, Um, so at a certain point, it's not even worth adding cards to your deck because you're kind of just reducing your chances of drawing your good ones. But I, I am going to take an Arrakis Liaison here because also I think by the time I even get to it, if the game is even still on, I'm going to need to buy a Spice Must Flow. I'm going to want a lot of Persuasion. So I am going to buy an Arrakis Liaison and I'm going to end the turn. Again, I could use this right now to go up one but it's still not really consequential. And I prefer having that mystery. The other players don't know what card I have. They don't know it's an influence here. So it's better to keep those things for a surprise. No! <laughs> no! Oh no! So, Leto's one combat intrigue card turned out to be huge. Allied Armada. If you have a faction alliance, which he does, he just stole that Freeman alliance from the beast. You can pay two spice to add seven swords. Oh. So he's edged me out here. I would have had to have thrown everything in to still win this conflict. And you know what? Most of the time that is what I do. But this time I thought, no, let me be a little bit conservative. And it cost me because he had, I think the one card um, in the Intrigue card deck that can do that. All right, well, there you go. Unfortunately, I don't have an Intrigue card that I can play. 
So in terms of the flow of intrigue cards here, Leto was the first player, so he had the first chance and he opened by playing that intrigue card. Helena passed, it's now me, I'm gonna pass. The beast has no troops, so he's gonna pass. And then it's gonna, theoretically, it would go back to Leto to have another opportunity, but in this game, in the digital version, it won't. It's just gonna stop as soon as I press pass. Oh, that hurts. That really hurts. Okay, well, I got three Solari, two Spice, and an Intrigue card. That's not bad, but it's not as good as two Victory Points. Okay, well, what I want is Spice and an Intrigue card. Oh yeah, choose two of these three. Okay, well, those are the two I want. I already have plenty of Solari. All right, I've got one of those cards myself now. It's not as good as the one Leto had because this one doesn't require you to have a faction alliance. Grand Vision. Okay, so the winner here will get two influence with a faction of their choice and an entry card. All right, let's see. If I were to win this, I could potentially go up two here and get the Guild Alliance. Now I only really need one to get the Guild Alliance, but that could happen. Potentially, I could go up here, get close to the Bene Gesserit Alliance. Uh, I don't really have much of a shot at winning this, and I don't really need it here. Um, it would be still good to win. I have three troops in my garrison. Two Bene Gesserit cards, so I could combo them to get the two spice, which wouldn't be a bad thing. Hmm. Let's see. Okay, now here's something that's quite nice in the digital game is it's very easy to look and see what cards are left in your deck. So I can click on my deck here and I can see I've got these three cards. Ooh. You know what? Those are pretty nice cards, especially this power play. It can take me to any faction space and it gets me two influence. So it's great at getting an alliance. Um, given that information, I'm pretty tempted to visit the research station, which costs two water, but I have three water and that'll draw me three cards. Okay. Now I think I want to use the voice to go there. and reserve myself the next spot. So I know I'm gonna be drawing these three cards. So maybe I gotta think about where I wanna send that power play. I'm trying to think if I can steal his alliance from Leto with Liet Kynes and the power play, if I send one here and one here, I could get it, but I think that's going to be pretty hard to do because if just one of these two visits the other space in the meantime, then it's all for naught. Hmm. I think... I think maybe um, one of these Bene Gesserit spots would be pretty good. for the power play. It's a complex game trying to plan out all of these decisions. Okay, well, where would I want to send the voice? Oh yeah, to research station. Let me do it. Deploy troops. I'll put in two. Okay. Which space would I like to block? Yeah, I think I'll block secrets. Another entry card could be handy.
Okay, so Leto has now reached the top of the alliance track with the Freeman, which means no one can pass him there. So that alliance is totally safe for him. Um, unless he goes back himself, there are a couple of cards that let you <laughs> drop down. Helena has reserved the Kwisatz Haderach for herself. So this is an absolutely incredible card. Notice it has no agent icons, but you can... The way that it works is when you play this card on an agent turn, send one of your agents from anywhere to any board space, even if it's occupied. So this means you can send an agent that you've already put out on the board to a different spot and basically get an extra agent this way. So with this card, you could send all of your agents out and then when it comes to your turn where you normally would reveal, you can use this card and get another agent turn. And it also draws you a card. So it's amazing. Okay, it's back to me. Um, I might as well do what I had planned to do. Um, use my power play here. Grab an Intrigue card. Ooh. And I go up two. So that gets me one point because I've crossed that line. Now let's look at this card. Okay, here's the third kind of Intrigue card. It's called an Endgame card. This card doesn't do anything until the end of the game. So at the very end of the game, when you're counting up people's victory points to see who, who wins, that's when these cards get played. So this one says, if you have three influence or more on three influence tracks, get a victory point. Well, that's true. I have three here, I have three here, and I have four here. Or if you have three influence or more on all four influence tracks, get two victory points. Well, that is well within reach. All I need to do is get at least one more influence with the guild, which by the way, I have guaranteed, for that card to be worth two victory points at the end of the game. Now that is huge. Um, not least of which because the other players don't know I have it. So they might trigger the end game thinking they're about to win and, ah, sorry, I have a surprise two secret points. That is phenomenal. Okay, so that is... That is that. I'm still not going to use that. Okay, Beast visits Selective Breeding, which allows you to pay two spice. Um, well, you have to pay two spice if you want to visit it. And then it allows you to trash a card if you want to. And if you do, draw two cards. It's a really nice spot to get crap cards out of your deck and refill your hand. I have a way of potentially winning this conflict. Helena is out of agents. It's just Beast and Leto. I have one agent remaining and I kind of want to make sure I stay above nine persuasion so that I can buy a spice must flow. Hmm. Well, I if I use Liet Kynes, then that will let me throw in a bunch of troops and potentially win the conflict. I also can potentially just win it with this private army. Maybe. So if I want to stay at nine persuasion, I can't use Liet Kynes because she's currently worth two persuasion. Uh, I'd like to use the G manipulation to get the spice and trash a card, but that's two persuasion. So the only way I could do that is if I sent it up here to Hall of Oratory to get one persuasion back that way. I could do that. Another thing I'm considering is visiting rally troops. So Rally troops would be nice because I'm pretty low on troops right now. And, you know, next the next turn, if there is one, if there is another round, um, I might need troops to fight for another two-point conflict. 
So that is tempting as well. If I want to do that, then I would have to use the signet ring or the dagger to do it. Hmm. So the question, I guess, is what do I want more? Do I want uh, to spice and trash a card or do I want troops? If I go here, I do draw a card. And actually, let me look here. Okay, so this is something to consider. Here is my entire discard pile. So I'll be drawing one of these cards if I visit Rally Troops. So that means I'm gonna get at least one persuasion from the card I draw. So actually, I can use the gene manipulation to do this and still make sure I have enough to buy a Spice Must Flow. It means I won't be throwing troops into the conflict right now. If I want to do that, um, I could, you know, send a signet ring to Siege Tabber, for example, which is not a bad play either. So there's always a lot of decisions to make in the game. And you kind of just have to look at probabilities and, you know, uh, sometimes just go with your gut. Well, I think I'd rather prioritize trying to get this um, rather than preparing for next turn. And if I can avoid using this private army, that would be good. So, I can't use this here because I won't draw a card that way. It's painful. Okay, let me just do this. We'll throw in two troops. And we'll see how it goes. Now, Helena has seven cards in hand, so probably she has a bunch of swords. Um, but that's fine. Um, you know what? I, okay, I am going to use this guild authorization now. And the reason is, if I come second, I'm going to get an entry card. And I don't really want to be sitting on four. So I'm just going to get this out of my hand now. And there we go. Okay, so Lito played an infiltrate entry card, which means he isn't blocked by enemy agents. That's why he's allowed to send another agent to the same spot. Helena has no swords, but nine persuasion. Okay, so no swords is great because that means I'm still in the lead here. Okay. So it's a reveal. I buy a spice must flow. That's going to give me another victory point. I'm up to eight. And turn. Okay, beast reveals for two swords. That's not enough to matter. Though he does have an entry card, so we never know. Leto's sword doesn't count because he has no troops. Helena passes, all right? So that then that means I'm gonna pass. There's no reason for me to play this right now. I'm still in the lead. Beast passes, Leto auto passes, and that's it. Everyone has passed consecutively. Okay, so I do win the conflict, which means I'm gonna get an entry card and I get two influence. Oh, well, this makes it a very easy decision. This entry card, when I play it, will give me the influence I need with the Sisterhood. So that's worth a point. So that means I can choose the Guild. That's going to get me the Guild Alliance. And that's going to put us to the end of the game. Because once I get this point, that'll be 9 points. Once I get this point, that'll be 10 points. Although, actually, I, can, I can't play this card uh, this round. It has to be during an agent or reveal turn. We're already past that here in the conflict. So it's going to have to wait until the following round, which means we'll see what happens. But anyway, I'm going to pick the guild. 
So that gets me the Guild Alliance and a Victory Point, and it also gets me three Solari for crossing that line. So I've got way more Solari than I need. And it's another two-point conflict. All right, well, how do I... How do I win this? That's going to be very difficult. I don't have enough spice, unfortunately, to visit the Hayliner right now. The Beast does. Helena also does. Uh, luckily, Leto, who's kind of the bigger threat, does not. Okay. Well, I might as well do this just right now. And the reason is, crossing this line will get me another entry card. So I might as well just trade it in and see what that is. So that got me the alliance with the Bene Gesserit. I currently have three alliances. I have the Emperor Alliance, I have the Space and Guild Alliance, and I have the Bene Gesserit Alliance. Um, it's looking pretty good for me at the moment. I don't know if I can win this conflict, Oh, okay, check this out. I only have three spice, right? That's not enough for the Hayliner. But if I get this four spice, that will be enough. But you say the beast or Helena might go there before me. Well, if I use the voice, I can block the Hayliner off and then send Thufu there later. So let me block this. I have no troops to send in at the moment. Okay, so this last round thing, that's flashing because I currently have 10 points. So at the end of the round, after the conflict resolves, basically, the game will check to see if anybody is sitting on 10 points. If so, it will be the end of the game. But if I... if you know, I could theor theoretically drop down um, below 10. If someone steals one of these alliances from me, for example, then I won't have 10 points anymore and the game will not end. Okay. It's back to me. So let's do this. So this alliance is totally safe now. I'm going to throw in all of these troops. And that's the end of my turn. I also have some combat intrigue cards to potentially back me up here. So it's looking pretty good. But it's certainly not guaranteed. There's still a lot of troops these players can throw in. They could have entry cards. So I may not win this conflict, but I'm going to... Oh! Helena just threw in a whole load of troops. How did she do it? She played her signet ring to gain a sword master. Okay, she used this really, really powerful intrigue card, rapid mobilization. Deploy any number of troops from your... Deploy any of your garrison troops to the conflict. So this just lets... If you have a bunch of troops just sitting in your garrison, you play this card and whoop, they all go into the conflict. Now, I think it was a bad time to do it because you can wait until the last second, basically, during your reveal turn to do it, and that makes more sense. There's no reason to kind of let everyone know, but... Okay. So... I might still win, but I'm going to need to have spice if I want a chance at it, because I'm going to need to be able to use this. Um, the other thing to consider is trying to buy a spice must flow to get another point. But it's not going to be easy for me to do that, because the two cards that I can play are worth two persuasion each. Well... Well, if I visit the research station again, I have two water back because I got two water from visiting the Hayliner. If I visit this research station, 
That's gonna do a couple of things for me. It'll get me two spice, which is what I need to activate the private army. Why? Because I already have a Bene Gesserit card in play from playing the voice earlier. And it's gonna draw three cards, which will give me a chance to get the persuasion to buy a spice must flow. It's not guaranteed, um, but I'm gonna try it. Okay, there's two persuasion. There's four persuasion. There's five, so that's great. Now, for trashing a card, I don't have anything in my discard pile. Uh, I could trash a card in play or in my hand. I don't really want to. There's not really any point. So uh, this this you know game is about to be over. So I'm gonna decline to trash. And I'll end the turn. Notice the beast signet ring only worth one troop now because of not having an alliance. All right, there's a lot of troops in here, so it's not looking great for me winning this. All right, it's over to me. I have no more agents, no intrigue cards I can play, so I reveal. And... I got a spice from my spice must flow reveal. Okay, now, what happens if players have the same number of points at the end of the game? Well, there are tiebreakers. So if you have the same number of points, then you look to see how much spice people have. That's the first tiebreaker. If you're tied on victory points and spice, then you look at Solari. That's the second tiebreaker. If you're tied on all three of those, then you look at water. If you're still tied after all that, Honestly, I don't, I don't know what happens. Uh, I've never seen it. Okay, anyway, I'm gonna buy a Spice Must Flow. And I'm not gonna bother buying anything else. There's not really any points. I'm just gonna end my turn. I could acquire another card, yeah, but I don't care. So I'm sitting at 11 points right now, and I have two secret points here. So I actually am gonna have 13. There's no maximum number of points, uh, but you know, it's pretty rare to get above 12 or 13. All right. So, here, the beast actually has two entry cards that are worth victory points. So these are some kind of shocker cards here, right at the end of the game. He did a good job hanging on to those and not showing us he had them. But just to show you what he had, so he had um, the sleeper must awaken. Why is it not showing me? There we go. So that's a card, you, a plot intrigue. You can use it on your agent turn or your reveal turn to pay four spice and get a victory point. Of course, just like all entry cards, it's a one-time use. <laughs> but he also had Chome shares for seven Solari get a victory point. So he just out of nowhere, he had two points we didn't know he had. Okay, what's the situation? Hmm. Five, seven, so I could actually add eight to my combat strength, which would tie me with the beast which would mean neither of us would get the points. We would both get five spice instead. Well, that's to my advantage, right? I would much rather neither of us get them than he get them. So here's again where the difference in the way combat intrigues work is important. Normally in a, in a game of Dune Imperium, I would play one of these and that's it. And I would wait to see what everyone else does. Then I would decide whether or not to play the other one. The problem is in the digital version right now, if I just play one of them and everyone else passes, it'll just end and I won't get the chance to play the other one. So I have to play them both at the same time now. So let me just do that. Master Tactician says either get three swords 
or retreat three troops. Well, I want the swords. And we'll use the private army for five strength there. Okay, the beast is out of entry cards. Leto's out of cards. Helena has one. Does she have anything to do? No. So we're going to tie for first place here, which means nobody gets first. Instead, we both get second. Helena gets third and Leto gets nothing. All right, so this is going to be the end of the game because I have more than 11 points. So everyone's using their end game intrigue cards right now. There's mine automatically being played. And that's it. That's our game of Dune Imperium. All right. So, um, yeah, you can see there that the Spice Tiebreaker came into play to decide, you know, who got third and who got fourth. But there was a very clear gap between first and second. Well, there you have it, your first game of Dune Imperium. Thanks so much for watching. I hope that was useful for you. I hope that you feel like now you can try it out yourself and see how you do. I think I covered most of the rules and situations in the game, although certainly not every possible question. So if you have any questions, feel free to ask in the comments and I'll be happy to answer. Um, Please subscribe to the channel for more Dune Imperium content. You can watch lots of videos where I play live matches against other players and I talk about my strategy as I play. You can watch me play through some of these solo versus AI challenges that are included in Dune Imperium Digital. There's even an online event, a tournament called The War Chest, and you can watch those games on the channel as well. You can also follow me on Twitch, twitch.tv slash bludgeon. And I typically stream about once a week, so tune in there. Uh, by the way, the tiebreaker after water is garrisoned troops. And after that, I think you're just tied. All right, well, that's going to do it for today. Thank you so much for watching and see you again soon.